Hello everyone and welcome back to the garden. I recently got this lovely supportive and encouraging comment here on the channel so I thought I would make this video. Uh, basically it was just saying hey if you don't know how to grow flowers then why are you making videos on the internet? So um, I thought I would put this video together because you know what everybody starts somewhere everybody has a starting place even the most professional of professionals out there at, at one time they had to plant their first seed and I ain't in the business of going around hating on people who are trying to learn how to grow stuff okay so uh, these are some kind of tips that I've learned along the way um, I mean I've been making YouTube videos for like six years now uh, wow, and I have definitely come a long way in terms of flower growing. You can go back and look at my first videos and you'd be like, whoa, this is sad. Um, you know, it is. It's a growing process, literally. Literally growing is what we are doing here. So to get right on into this, the first thing uh, I think is an important tip for first timers or beginners is to uh, know your limitations, okay? And I don't just mean like, you know, budget-wise or space wise I especially mean like physically like know your limitations you know if you're an older person or if you have uh, special like health considerations you know you have to take those into account and I'm definitely guilty of this because when I plan my gardens and all this stuff you know I'm like okay this will work out great and then I get in there or I start picking things and harvesting things and it's the middle of summer and it's 107 degrees outside and I'm just you know uh, I feel like I'm already to get heat stroke you have to take care of yourself and I think that's the number one important thing in starting your own garden is to uh, know what you're going to you know physically be able to handle or mentally be able to handle you know if things get really really crazy uh, I mean let's face it we've all been there uh, but just something to consider that I think a lot of times gets overlooked so you got to take care of yourself uh, the next piece of advice I have is just don't go over the top the first season now I know this is easier said than done because I am very much the type of person who's like yes let's buy everything let's plant everything this is going to be awesome and then I get you know I get to the growing season and I'm just like oh man oh man what did I do this is not awesome I don't have enough room for this stuff uh, I don't know what I'm doing half of it's not growing some of it's doing okay but what am I doing I don't know and that's actually something that's happening in my yard right now as I, as I speak. Um, things are just running out of control. So if it's your first season, try to kind of ease on into it. Um, for example, my daffodils in this video and my ranunculus here in this video that you're seeing, uh, you can see that I have very large plantings of these. But like I said, I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been planting flowers for 10 years. Uh, this isn't my first rodeo, you know what I'm saying? The first time I ever grew ranunculus, for example, here you see 500 ranunculus, which, you know, compared to what other people do, 500 ranunculus is not a lot of ranunculus. Uh, but the first time, I think I grew 50 of them, and that was it. Which leads me to my next point about starting out cheap. And that was difficult for something like ranunculus because you see all of these fancy, beautiful, alluring, fluffy varieties on the internet floating around. You're like, wow, I have to have that. Uh, but the thing in the matter is, it's so hard to get your hands on those bulbs, A, number one. B, number two, they're pricey and a lot of times people overcharge for them because they know that they can even though the wholesale price is a lot cheaper. Uh, some of the fancier varieties, like the Colony series, are like $2 and $3 for a corm. Um, if you're lucky, that's a good price for them. And you can't even, you know, you have to destroy them in the, in the season because of their trademark or copyright or whatever. So while it is tempting, if you've never grown this stuff before, I really do encourage you guys to check out, like, the dollar store. And I mean that in the best way possible. The first for years, probably the first three years of growing ranunculus, all of my corms came from the dollar store just because I, they were cheap, number one, I could afford them. And I was really, really focused on learning the ins and outs of growing them and learning how to be successful 
And eventually, I felt comfortable spending more money on the ranunculus. And thankfully, YouTube came along to help me with that also. So uh, the same also applies with seeds and things for things like sweet peas and a lot of the biennials and things like that. I know there are some really, really beautiful, fancier varieties, but um, if it's your first time, don't be afraid to just grab a cheap pack. The cheap packs are just as good, and nine times out of ten, they are just as beautiful. Um, I don't think, especially as a beginner, I don't think it's disappointing to just look for a budget. Uh, the next point, point number four, is we have to make sure to do our research and I say we because this includes me so much it's not even funny I am so guilty of this the first time I ever grew a garden I didn't research anything it was a disaster uh, especially you know a lot of biennials um, it's really helpful to research biennials for example the Canterbury Bells that you're seeing here in this video as well as some things like foxgloves and everything um, knowing when to plant this stuff is some of the most critical information that you can know. Some of these flowers are hardy annuals, some of them are summer tender flowers which cannot handle a frost and the key to getting them to grow to a great size and to produce a great bloom is to know when to plant them. That way they can get established and send up really really nice long beautiful flower stalks that are usable. Um, in addition to knowing actually when to plant them, another big one is knowing how to plant them. Uh, my first garden, I just threw a bunch of seeds on the ground. I was like, well, I planted the garden. No, no, no. That's not how that always works. So really want to take into consideration how you're starting the seeds. Are you going to use grow lights? Are you going to use the winter sowing method? The winter sowing method was a total just game changer for me. Amazing. I can't, I just can't recommend it enough, especially if you're a beginner. Next uh, thing I wanted to mention was plant spacing. Uh, plant spacing is really important, especially when you are growing in a tiny backyard like me. Or not tiny, but a pretty small backyard. It's just all relative. My backyard is about 30 feet by 30 feet. And this means that I have to make the most of the spacing in my backyard if I really want to make the most of my cut flower production. So in a lot of cases for me, this means planting as close as six inches apart for smaller plants. And that seems to do pretty well, but you do want to pay attention because your spacing can also have a huge impact on air circulation, airflow, and avoiding and preventing diseases. Things like powdery mildew, for example, I, I have frequently by the time the end of the year arrives, a lot of my zinnias are having trouble with powdery mildew just because I do have that spacing packed so tight and um, that's really a an important factor in preventing a lot of disease. In that same note number six we have uh, you need to have a plan for controlling the weeds. This is my thing right here. I'm talking to myself. This is the rule that I need to follow. Um, here in my yard I use a uh, heavy weight landscape barrier fabric. It's kind of like a woven plastic type situation that you burn holes into and it works great. Uh, not only that, it is very very durable. For example, the plastic that I'm using in my backyard right now was actually purchased eight years ago, eight seasons ago. This stuff has been uh, getting used for that long. So even though it's a little bit on the pricier side, it was a little bit of investment. When I first started out, I went through my closet and I sold all of my work clothes. I'd quit my job. Actually, my job had been outsourced. I, I didn't have a job anymore. I went through, I sold all of my work clothes on eBay. I went through the house. I sold anything that wasn't nailed down on eBay and I earned $400 to buy some weed barrier fabric off eBay and I'm still using it. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes you gotta make sacrifices, I guess. Um, hopefully, I won't have to buy any more in the near future, but Weed Barrier, great, great resource. Also, um, some people are just really comfortable pulling weeds. That's just not my cup of tea. If if y'all saw some of my bare beds out there right now, you'd be appalled by them probably. Anyway, uh, in addition to weed control, I just wanted to mention number seven. Great tip that I never got when I was first learning. Never overhead water. Ever. Don't, try not to ever overhead water. This is another one that has a lot to do with disease prevention on the plants. And um, 
ever since I stopped overhead watering, it's been a game changer. No sprinklers, no, you know, garden hose spray or anything like that. Um, if anything, I'll take a bucket and do a soil drench with my rain barrel if I have to uh, add, you know, additional water. Luckily, it rains here quite a bit. You know, there's nothing really that I can do about the rain, unfortunately, in terms of getting the leaves wet. But if those leaves are wet on your plants, never ever touch the plants when the leaves are wet. It just a, seems like a very good way to spread different spores and diseases around from one plant to another so I do try to avoid that definitely not going to be harvesting any cut flowers while the plants are wet or anything like that um, just a good general tip last but certainly not least for this video I just wanted to mention um, how important it is at least it was important for me to not be distracted by I guess uh, social media false reality <laughs> or I, I guess I would call it the thing is, as a beginner, you know, you're doing your best, you're learning so much, uh, there are going to be successes, beautiful, wonderful successes, and there are going to be some big, stinky, rotten failures. It's, you know, it's just one of those things as you learn and grow, especially if you have zero experience with growing flowers or, gar you know, vegetables or anything like that, you're going to have some failures. And um, your successes might not be as good as the successes that you see on the internet. And it's so, so important that you don't get caught in the trap of comparing yourself to others. And this is one that I struggle with all the time. That's why I don't follow anybody on Instagram. It's not because I'm like, oh, I am so cool. It's just, you know, um, I have trouble being like, why can't I do that? You know, really just beating myself up over things that are out of your control. Uh, the thing is, you can't compare yourself to somebody else who's been doing something for 20 years. Um, you know, you're not gonna go try to play hoops with Shaq and then be mad that he, like, whooped you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a great example. Great example, Tanya. You're doing great. This is a good video. Thumbs up. I love this video. Anyway, um, but the fact of the matter is you have to focus on what you're doing now, where you are now, and celebrate those little victories. You know, I feel like as social media, we have you know, just so much pressure to, oh, look at this, look at that, oh, look how great this is, isn't that great? And the thing to remember is these are the best photos of the best times of these people's best successes. And you know, comparing yourself to those moments, it just isn't fair to yourself and it isn't right for your successes because your successes are the ones that matter to you. Um, that's really about it for this video. Hopefully it makes sense. Hopefully I didn't get too rambly and preachy at the end, but that's just genuinely how I feel. You gotta be kind to yourself, especially when you're learning something new. Uh, you gotta just be patient, love yourself, and be your own fan. It's okay to be feel proud about something and uh, feel like you've, you know, you've reached an accomplishment. Hopefully you like this one. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine too. It's all good. Everything's flowery and sunny here. So I hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.